Profiles provide users with the ability to customize various playthroughs for the same instance. Profiles allow for different left and right pane checkbox activation, left and right pane priority, local saves, and any file settings. Profiles do not affect optional plugins, hidden files, mod names, mod categories, mod versions, or pretty much anything else. If you want to alter absolutely everything, consider creating a new instance of MO for the same game with new file pass. To open the profile window, select Profiles, the ID icon, from MO's toolbar. Create. Selecting Create opens a dialog window that allows you to name the new profile and implement the default game any files by activating the Default Game Settings checkbox. Select OK when finished and then close. The new profile will now be active. Profiles can be changed via the drop-down menu at the top of the left pane. With a new profile, all mods are listed, but none will be activated. Copy allows you to duplicate pre-existing profiles in all of their settings. Selecting Copy opens the name window, allowing you to title it. When finished, select OK, and then Close. The new profile will be active. All settings will have been carried over. Remove allows you to delete a selected profile in all of its settings. Rename allows you to rename a selected profile. Transfer Saves allows you to transfer save files from the vanilla game location to the profile. Only truly useful if you started a vanilla game and moved it over to MO to start adding mods. Local Save Games By deactivating this checkbox, you gray out the transfer saves option and are only allowed to see and use saves from the individual profile. Saves can always be dragged and dropped from folder to folder via Windows Explorer, but it's not recommended unless you are familiar with how modding affects save files. Local Game Settings allows you to choose whether or not you want to use the default any files located in the My Games directory, or if you would like to use a set of isolated any files accessible via MO to customize settings profile to profile. I activate the checkbox to use the isolated innies. This also avoids innies being reset automatically when verifying file integrity. Automatic Archive and Validation as covered in the installation guide, allows mods to override the official files in Bethesda archives. This may not be needed at all, but it doesn't hurt to enable it. While most mod managers utilize the vanilla any files located in My Games directory, Mod Organizer allows the usage of isolated any files that are stored in the individual profile folders. If your profile is set to use local game settings, these are the any files that you use. Otherwise, you still use the vanilla innies. To access any files, select the Tools puzzle icon from the toolbar and open any editor. Opening the any editor presents you with the any files that are active for your profile, profile specific any files if local game settings is activated, or the global any files if local game settings is deactivated. Games that support custom innies have those as well. Edit the any files here exactly the same way as you would in My Games. You can also enable your default text reader, such as Notepad++, to be used here instead. To use your default editor, open Settings, and then the Plugins tab. Scroll down and highlight any editor. In the right window, double-click External, and using the drop-down menu, set it to True. From now on, when you select the any editor, all any files will open in individual documents and all at once. Simply set external to false to restore defaults. Most third-party applications, such as XEdit and script extenders, need to be executed from within Mod Organizer for them to function properly. To open the Modify Executables window, which is where we manage third-party applications, select the Gears icon from the toolbar. The Viewing window. The viewing window is where MO displays third-party executables to be managed. They can be selected and manipulated by changing the text fields and then choosing to either add, modify, or remove them. Titles that are grayed out cannot be removed as they are auto-detected. Title allows you to name or rename the selected application. Binary is an executables file path .exe, .bat, .cmd, .com, and .jar files are supported. To change the binary, select the ellipsis at the right of the field. Navigate to an application's executable and double-click it. Start in 
is the working directory of the application, the folder in which the executable is stored. It can be used to set a custom working directory for the executable at hand. However, you should usually leave this pointing to the directory where the executable is located. Arguments is where you input command line arguments to be passed to the binary. Overwrite Steam App ID, only used for applications downloaded from Steam. I have never once had to fill this in. The only app known from Steam is the Creation Kit and it is set up automatically. Create files in mod instead of overwrite. Allows you to choose a folder in the left pane to output new files to that are generated by the application at hand instead of overwrite. This essentially creates a tool-specific version of overwrite. Keep in mind that only new files, files with names that do not already exist in other mod folders, get placed here. To avoid confusion, it may be best to leave this option deactivated. Use Applications icon for shortcuts. When activated, uses the Applications icon for shortcuts created via Mod Organizer. When you have finished altering the text field, select Add to add it to your list. Select Modify to save any changes made to a current application, or select Remove to remove the app from your list. Select Close to exit the window. To launch an application from within Mod Organizer, open the Run drop-down menu. Choose an application, then select Run. If set up properly in the previous step, the application will launch. Most mods that use their own executables come with them packed inside of them. Instead of trying to add them through the Modify Executables window, a faster and safer way to do so is to make sure that the mod is properly installed to Mod Organizer. Open the Data tab in the right pane, scroll to the bottom of the window. Here is a set of arrows. All .jar, .bat, and other application executables that are packaged with installed mods are sorted here. Expanding the appropriate arrow allows you to see the executables within. Right-click them, choose Add as Executable, and it will be added to your list. You can then run it as you would if you had added it from the Modify Executables window. The Overwrite mod was expanded upon in detail in the previous video. What we need to recap here is that every application run through Mod Organizer outputs new files to Overwrite. Pre-existing files get updated in their mod folders, avoiding overwrite altogether. Nothing run through MO gets placed in the data folder. If you run a program that both updates pre-existing files and creates completely new ones, the pre-existing files are still updated in their mod folders, and the new files are still added to overwrite. In this situation, simply drag and drop the new files into the appropriate folder in the left pane. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, Mod Organizer 2, Profiles and Apps. A big thank you to the MO2 devs for helping to update the text based on some new application updates. To you patrons out there, allowing me to continue doing this day after day. And to all of you watching, liking, and sharing to help GP reach new audiences and to inform old viewers of the quality upgrades over the years. Thank you for supporting, and thank you for watching.